A clear mammogram one year, stage three breast cancer the next. The reason, dense breast tissue hid the tumor. When we come back, meet a survivor working to change laws so other women don't go through what she did. Plus, not all radiation treatments are created equal. We're talking to a breast surgeon about options available right now for patients battling breast cancer. She followed the guidelines, got a mammogram, but the imaging missed a tumor. One year later, the devastating diagnosis, stage three breast cancer. Tanya Rogers is talking tonight to a breast cancer survivor advocating for new laws to keep other women from having the same experience. One year now. Sandy Strader thought everything was fine after her mammogram. It came back that I had dense breast tissue and that they would see me in a year and I just was happy and I saw the letter and threw it in the garbage. No one told her that dense breasts show up cloudy in a mammogram, making detecting cancer a challenge. A year later, she was diagnosed with stage three cancer. She wishes someone had told her that there are options when diagnosed with dense breasts, options such as an ultrasound. Not all states have breast density and form laws. Once you're diagnosed with dense breasts, you should be told what it is and there should be a formal diagnosis versus a letter in the mail. Dr. Linda Fry agrees. It's again educating the community and the physicians. She says about 50 percent of her patients have dense breasts. Access to other options beyond mammograms could help save more lives. I think um, putting pressure on insurance companies to include ultrasound as a screening part of a, a patient's annual exam if they have dense breast. Now that you're almost one year a breast cancer survivor, what's your advice to other people? Stay proactive or become proactive and be the best advocate you can be for yourself. Now, Maryland law requires patients to be notified if their mammogram shows dense breast tissue. So are all the other green states on the map you're looking at right here. But the notification doesn't require a woman to get further testing. You really have to be proactive and make the call for yourself. States highlighted in yellow are working on breast density notification legislation. States in gray don't have any notification laws. You know, immediately after a breast cancer diagnosis, your focus shifts to treatment. Tonight at 11 o'clock, we're going to introduce you to a breast cancer survivor whose treatment plans include something called IORT. It's a radiation option. And joining us now to put radiation treatments in focus is Dr. Mon Farhar, breast surgeon and director of the Breast Cancer Center at MedStar Union Memorial Hospital. Doctor, thanks so much for talking with us. You are most welcome. We're Kevin. talking about uh, radiation therapy. That is a scary, you know, thought it's scary. when you already have gone through sure, it's breast scary. cancer. Now, is it a necessary treatment? Uh, not every patient needs radiation, but a good majority of patients who have breast cancer will benefit from radiation. Let's take a group of patients who radiation is very helpful for. Okay. For example, patients with bone metastasis or brain metastasis, radiation is very effective to control symptoms and to delay the progress of that disease. However, there are, the radiation has enabled us to save a lot of breasts over the years. It, the, the standard treatment used to be with somebody with breast cancer is just to have a mastectomy. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a mastectomy. Early in the 80s, the studies started maturing, showing that doing a lumpectomy with radiation has the same success rate in curing the disease as a full mastectomy. So although it's a necessary evil if a patient wants breast conserving therapy, which is if she wants to keep her breast. Mm -hmm. Now I uh, interviewed Mary Perry, one of your patients, and we're going to profile her tonight. She had something called IORT. Tell us about that it, what it is and how it works. So again, uh, we're focusing more and more, we're focusing our treatments on where the cancer is. Mm -hmm. I'll take you back to the 1980s where everybody would get whole breast radiation, meaning the whole, after the lumpectomy, the remaining breast and the surrounding tissues will get radiated. What we've discovered, actually, that in many patients, you don't have to radiate the healthy tissue around where the tumor was. Mm -hmm. So that's called whole breast radiation. We moved into an era where we're focusing the radiation in the bed around the tumor. So that's called partial breast radiation. Okay. That evolved over the years from one technique that we've been using since 2005. And to recently, what we do is, after we take the tumor out, we assess the area. We 
and we think that this patient has clear margins, mm -hmm. then we put a balloon into the lumpectomy cavity. We call the radiation therapist who delivers radiation to the bed of the tumor. So it's more targeted? More targeted. So the advantages is patients love it. It's very convenient. Mm -hmm. But you also avoid radiating tissues that don't need radiation, the lung, the heart, uh, and the rest of the breast, which has no reason to be radiated. But you have to select the right patients. Okay, so Not everybody is eligible for this type of treatment. And that's why you go to somebody like Dr. Harhar, who knows what he's talking about. Thank you. Doctor, thanks so much for coming in. We're doing these stories to help raise awareness as we are involved with uh, Coleman, Maryland. We're raising awareness. ABC2 is uh, proud to be a sponsor of Coleman, Maryland's Race for the Cure in Hunt Valley. Start a team, donate to the cause, find out why this fight is so critical by logging on to our website. Again, once again, a proud sponsor. You can still register for the race. All you have to do is head to abc2news.com slash Coleman. Mike?